Welcome everyone to another uh, edition of MLOps with GitLab and today we will continue the series of exploring GitLab pipelines for hyperparameter optimization and this time we're going to talk about hyperparameter uh, running the jobs in parallel for hyperparameter optimization. My name is Eduardo, I'm an incubation engineer for MLOps and just a recap, why are we doing this in the first place? So hyperparameter optimization is the process uh, of in ML development, in machine learning development, where you choose the, the best parameters for your model, for your algorithm automatically. So the configuration of, a, of an algorithm can make, can, the right configuration can make a huge impact on the performance. Uh, but choosing this automatically is a very tedious process, uh, very time-consuming, cons uh, resource-intensive uh, process, and it basically must be done through uh, pipelines. So we want to check out if GitLab fits the bill here, if we can use GitLab for, for, uh, for this use case. It's also the first step towards AutoML. So if we ever want to do AutoML, hyperparameter optimization is one of the uh, of the uh, steps on, on AutoML. Uh, so if you want to check out what, uh, everything that is being covered over here and follow up for the new videos that will come up soon, uh, follow the EPIC, the Hyperparameter Exploration EPIC. And so what we did so far on part zero, we explained what is hyperparameter optimization. If you're new, if you're arriving now and you want to understand a bit more what we're doing here, go please go back over there on that video. Uh, I, I take a little bit more time to, to, to explain all the, the edge cases and, and why is this important. And then on part one, we create a very simple pipeline uh, that runs hyperparameter optimization. But it runs sequentially. And the thing about hyperparameter optimization is that, okay, so for example, on this one, I have on this, it's very simple that I created. It has, I don't know, 18 different hyperparameter combinations. Each run five times and each model training takes a second. So it should take about two minutes to run everything. Real world though, it usually would take, I don't know, days, hours, uh, possibly even weeks to train a single model. So if you, and the number of hyperparameters that you're gonna ex be exploring is a lot, lot larger than 18. So you cannot wait for an entire month or a quarter just for hyperparameters to be optimized, right? Um, so sequentially running the trials don't really don't really scale that well. So if we can't rely on running them sequentially, we have to do this parallel. Um, but how? How can we do this? The thing is like. Our hyperparameters are not preset. They are defined on a hyperparameter file.yaml file. When I'm coding the CI, I don't know how, the, how many jobs I will need at runtime, right? So I cannot really write them down. Uh, and even if I could, that would be a very tedious process. Um, so how can we go about this? And the solution for that is dynamic parent-child pipelines. So a parent-child pipeline in GitLab is a parent, a parent pipeline that triggers a child pipeline. And a dynamic one is a parent pipeline that creates, a through some script, a, a pipeline definition and then triggers that new definition on a child pipeline. So that allows us to do whatever we want, basically. We can encode every kind of dynamic behavior we want for that to happen into a static that is created afterwards, right? At runtime. And this is where we want to go. So let's take a look on it, how it looks right now. So here I have on the hyperparameter uh, repository, I have a, I, I already a merge request ready. And here we can see this is the uh, parent pipeline, uh, only two jobs, one for generating uh, the, the CI, another one for running. And then here on the downstream, I can see the child pipeline. So this prepare, optimize and publish, this is entire thing is the 
uh, the pipeline that you're taking a look at. And this is very similar to the, the old one we have. The only difference that instead of running sequentially, now we run them in parallel. Um, so this is actually what we, we wanted to achieve. Uh, uh, and it's great that we can do that right now. So let's take a bit, let's look at how we did, did we implement this. So first we have the parent pipeline. Like I said, very simple. The only goal is to generate optimization, CI, and then run the CI. So it's a very small configuration file. And the only important thing is that one over there. It's a script that generates that uh, generates the, the file. So it takes a uh, a template that I wrote in Jinja2 and reads the hyperparameters.yaml file and then creates this quite large uh, CI file. And you see how I repeated over and over uh, run trial 101. So for each for each of the trials that I have defined on a hyperparameter, if of the combinations that I have defined on hyperparameters.yaml, I have one run trial uh, job. I was pointed out that there's a much simpler way to create this with the keyword parallel. It will create uh, the, all of this automatically. But you still need to pass for parallel the number of jobs that you want that you want to start. So you would need dynamic pipelines either way. It's just that it would become a lot cleaner to read. So uh, I might want to implement that uh, in the future. Um, and then with that, it creates the child pipeline that looks like this. So like I showed before, it has a preparation step and then it has a run step and then a, fin uh, a publishing or fin finalized step. Prepare step, two things. One, prepare the data, still the, th the same synthetic data that we used before, but it also prepared the trial files. So it creates a file with all parameters that each one of the trials are going to pick up. In theory, I could pass this directly when creating the definitions, but using a file like this will help us uh, in the next step, uh, which is making this iterative. So it could be done a little bit different. Maybe uh, for this specific use case where I'm just running them in parallel, it wouldn't be necessary to, to create this file, but uh, it will be clear on the ne next video, on the next step, why it was this important. So I create this file and then the next step is uh, run. So run each one of the trials will pick up one of the uh, one of the items on that configuration file that I just showed. It will train the model and it will create a uh, CSV file uh, with the ID and the statistics for that training. So what was the score? What was the training time? What was the feeding time for each of them? Then uh, we come. Then we have the finalized pipeline. Uh, the step. Uh, the first part of here is the part here is the collect results, where I read all of these files that were generated, and I compute statistic on them. So basically, I remove the sklearn uh, part of optimization and implemented everything on my own. So we hand uh, we implemented we were implemented those so that we could take control of how they, those things run. So we are even though we are using SQLearn for cross validation, we are now we don't use this for the optimization anymore. We have implemented our own optimization uh, algorithm, and then we publish the results. So this is. Um, this is the work that, that was done. So, uh, so for example, here I can show the the, the results being uh, displayed. So, if I come to the over here, yeah, and here you can see the results that are displayed. Uh, the last step it comments on the on the on the merge request the results of each one of the trials and what is the best trial. So pretty cool. Um, so now looking at this, some improvement points uh, that appeared. The iteration is even slower than before uh, because 
no, before we could st st at least use uh, the, the online editors like the, the pipeline editor and things like that. But on this one, the GitLab CI file is just the parent one. The child pipeline is a separate file. So you can't really use the pipeline editor. So what I did is I create a child pipeline first with some hand, uh, uh, hand typed uh, trials. And when I was happy with that, then I transformed that into a template. But it becomes a lot slower, the, 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 the iteration time of this. Um, and one thing that would make it a lot, lot easier, a lot, lot faster to implement a pipeline, also a lot more, uh, a lot less resource intensive to implement a pipeline is the concept of checkpoints. So suppose that I'm, I, I have six steps on my pipeline and fourth step take an hour and then steps five, six and seven are very quick. Now suppose that step five is failing. So, and it depends on the output of step four. So if I wanna fix the step five pipeline, I have to rerun everything again. Um, and that is very, very annoying. So it would be really useful if I could um, store the state until stage four, until step four, and then replay only step five afterwards. So you don't need to rerun the entire pipeline. You run everything that was correct. You keep, you don't need to run what was correct. You keep that and then you just run the new steps. Uh, so that would make the process a lot more, uh, a lot faster, a lot more useful. And that mean you would use a lot less resources as well. Um, and that would be pretty cool to see at some point. Um, coming next. Next week, things will get fun because right now we know what are the hyperparameters that we're going to use when even when we create the hyper the, the the dynamic pipeline we know what are the hyperparameters that the combinations but what if we don't know what if we have to compute this hyperparameters at runtime of the child what's uh, what will look what will that look like this is the, the the our next step this is where we start bending uh, a bit GitLab uh, to things it wasn't supposed to do, and I'm very excited about that. Um, so, and after that, we want to really look at Jupyter, see if we can um, have a quick way of converting a, Ju a Jupyter uh, notebook into a GitLab CI pipeline. That was it for this week or for this part. And I hope you enjoyed it and we'll see you next time. If you want to see this video, check out uh, everything else. Uh, please follow the epic that I, sh I shared before. Um, cheers.